My name is Rich Fultz, and I am the Associate Director of the Illinois Association of School Administrators. This webinar is part of the series of webinars I have developed for teacher evaluators. The topic of this webinar is teacher evaluation scoring and inter-rater reliability. We will be discussing two aspects of teacher evaluation in this training. The first is the scoring of the teaching, and the second is the inter-rater reliability between teacher evaluators in the same school district. First, a quick review of the Vault 6 Steps to Effective Teacher Evaluation. These steps consist of Step 1, concentrating on the correct domain component. In the six steps process, the most important domain component to evaluate is 3C, followed by 3B, then 3A, then 3D, and then following that with 2A, 2B, 2C, and 2D. Step two is get buy-in in the process. This means as administrators, we should make sure that our teachers are properly trained and know what the standards are that they're being evaluated against in the Danielson Frameworks for Teaching. Step three is change the focus. Focus on the student and what the student is learning instead of scripting what the teacher is doing. Step four is observe more. This is a very difficult process for teachers and administrators to get to a fair rating system. For an administrator to rate a teacher fairly, they need to be in the classroom multiple times over the time period of the evaluation cycle. In addition, there needs to be a lot of communication between the evaluator and the teacher in order to improve the teacher's performance. Reflection is the key for all evaluation. Every time an administrator observes a teacher, either informally or formally, the administrator should meet with the teacher and have the teacher reflect on their own performance. In the last step, step six, is to know when to play the proper role of whether to be a coach, a teacher, or a mentor when you're dealing with the teacher in the reflective and post-conferencing phases. The Volt scoring method consists of several steps. First, the evaluator should record evidence of the observation. For an informal observation, refer to the critical attributes for the focused observation that are in the Danielson frameworks. For example, if the evaluator is collecting focused evidence on domain 3C, engaging students in learning, the evaluator would start with the first critical attribute in the proficient column. In 3C, it would read, most students are intellectually engaged in the lesson. If the evidence supports this description, then the evaluator would look to the right to see if it meets the higher description. In 3C, the description to the right in the critical attribute states, virtually all students are intellectually engaged in the lesson. The evaluator would highlight whichever attribute is supported by the evidence. The slide you are looking at is an example of a finished scoring rubric by a teacher evaluator for Danielson Domain Component 2A. In this instance, the teacher evaluator had visited the classroom for an informal observation concentrating on 2A, creating an environment of respect and rapport. The evaluator has recorded evidence around the component. After recording the evidence, the evaluator highlighted four critical attributes in the proficient column and one critical attribute in the distinguished column. In this example, the evaluator started in the proficient column, which reads, most students are intellectually engaged in the lesson for 3C. The evaluator did not have evidence to support this rating, so the evaluator looked to the left of the proficient column to the basic or needs improvement column. In that descriptor read, some students are intellectually engaged in the lesson. The evaluator decided that this evidence that was gathered in this observation met that critical attribute. Thus, the administrator highlighted in the column two needs improvement or basic column that the evidence was most students are not in intellectually engaged in the lesson. Some students are intellectually engaged. This slide depicts the final marking by the teacher evaluator. In this example, the rating of the teacher for 3C would be needs improvement. There were four critical attributes rated in the needs improvement or basic category. 
and there were two critical attributes rated in the unsatisfactory category. So the evaluator summarized the various highlighting to be needs improvement. Under the Volts plan, the teacher evaluator would not be finished upon highlighting the critical attributes for the domain component that they are observing. Just like we want teachers to encourage students to do their own intellectual thinking in a distinguished classroom, we want teachers to do intellectual thinking about their own teaching performance. These reflective conversations are the most important part of the teacher evaluation process. Teacher evaluation is not only about the rating, it is about improving the teaching performance to a distinguished level for all teachers. The next step would be to have a reflective conference between the teacher evaluator and the teacher. The teacher would be instructed to highlight the critical attributes for the same domain component that the evaluator was looking at before coming to the reflective meeting. The two parties would discuss their ratings and give explanations into why they highlighted certain attributes. All of this discussion should center around the evidence that occurred while the teacher evaluator was in the classroom for that informal or formal observation. A tip I would give teacher evaluators is to hold all reflective conferences and meetings between the teacher and the evaluator in the teacher's classroom. There are several reasons for doing this. First, if the meeting is in the teacher's room, it is in the teacher's venue. It is less intimidating than being in the administrator's office. Second, the teacher will have all the materials in the room and re can refer to or bring out these materials in the conference. Third, by conducting the meeting in the teacher's room, the evaluator is more in charge of the time allotted to the meeting. The evaluator can set the meeting time and then tactfully call the meeting to end when the time has expired. It is much easier for the evaluator to leave the teacher's room than to leave their own office when the meeting comes to an end. Another tip is to make sure the evaluator gives the teacher all the observational notes as soon as possible after the observation so that the teacher will have time to reflect on the notes prior to the reflective conference. After gathering the observational evidence and scoring the evidence against the critical attributes of the Danielson Frameworks for Teaching, the evaluator needs to prepare a reflective question to ask the teacher. The evaluator should review the evidence and scoring and decide the most critical aspect that the teacher will want to improve on based on the observational evidence scored by the evaluator. In one of the previous examples where the evaluator rated the teacher as needs improvement for 3C engaging students in learning, the evaluator contemplates various reflective questions they could ask the teacher. On this slide are four possible reflective questions to ask the teacher to improve their own performance. The final step is to get the teacher to design an action plan for themselves. What specific action is the teacher willing to make? By what time period? What support is needed? And put all of this into a SMART goal format that includes a particular time when the evaluator is gonna go back into the classroom to see if the teacher has implemented the changes they've talked about in the reflective conference. Interrater reliability is a bigger concern in larger school districts versus very small school districts. If only one or two administrators are rating the teaching, it is easier to keep the process and rating consistent. However, in larger school districts that have many teacher evaluators, there is often a feeling from teachers that some administrators are tougher than others on the topic of teacher evaluation. In larger districts, it is recommended that evaluators provide observational input into each other's primary evaluator role. This helps teachers understand that the observational evidence is not predicated on one evaluator's skills, but the evidence is collected from multiple evaluators on the same teacher. In addition to the evaluators providing observational input into other evaluators' primary teaching, the entire administrative staff should regularly view short samples of teacher work, score the teaching, and then talk about the scoring in a collaborative setting. 
This slide contains internet sources for obtaining teacher videos for scoring purposes. I recommend using Teaching Channel and searching for uncut lessons on this website to get samples of teaching. The administrators gather evidence and score the teaching on at least a monthly basis. Minutes should be kept at these meetings along with the score sheets to prove inter-rater reliability if inter-rater reliability is ever challenged. By answering these three questions, you can reflect on how your present practice is different or similar to the practices being taught in this webinar. How do you score the teaching? Do you reflect with the teacher prior to making the rating? What does your district presently do to record evidence for inter-rater reliability? For further information concerning